Welcome to GeoG Spotlight. As market momentum continues to surge with Nifty and Sensex hitting new record highs, investors are eager for insights on the road ahead. GeoG Chief Investment Strategist Dr. VK Vijayuma joins us to share his views on current market scenario. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Abhinash. So the bull run is uh, continuing with Nifty and Sensex uh, hitting new record highs. Will the rally continue or what is the short to medium term outlook? Yes, the market is very strong. The trend continues to be bullish. But uh, the answer to your question, will the market continue to go up? My answer is, in the short run, what will happen, nobody knows. Market may correct. Sometimes there can be a crash. But when the correction will happen, what will be the extent of the crash? These are things which nobody can predict. We can say that in the long run, you will get very good return from the market. Inflation beating returns from the market. Last 40 years, if you take, we have uh, investors got more than 15 percentage CAGR. That they will continue to get if they remain invested in the market and continue to invest in the market systematically. So what will happen in the market in the short run? Nobody can say, I don't know. So what we should be doing is, as investors, what we should be doing is uh, to monitor what is happening in the market now, to understand the trends in the market now, to analyze the important data in the market now. In this context, three facts are important. Number one, what we are having now is a global bull market rally led by the US, the mother market US. As on today, 24th September, S&P 500 is up by more than 20 percentage. Nifty is up by more than 19 percentage. European markets are weak because the economic fundamentals are weak there. But there is a global rally in markets. That is the first thing. Second point is, in India, we have strong fundamental support to this rally. GDP growth, if you take the last four years, including the present year, the GDP growth rate will be, the average GDP growth rate will be more than 7%, the best in the world. Also, this growth is getting reflected in corporate earnings. During the last four years, the, uh, if you take the last five years, 2019 to 2024, uh, the corporate earnings growth is around 18 percentage. Actually, market also has, Nifty also has gone up by around 18 percentage during this time. So there is fundamental support to the rally. That is the second point. But most important thing that investors have to understand is that this rally in India is primarily driven by the gush of domestic liquidity. This is huge wall of domestic liquidity that is the prime mover of this market. I will give you some important data. Take the last uh, 28 months from June 2022 to September 2024. During this period, 28 month period, foreign institutional investors sold stocks worth 1.82 lakh crores in India. Now, when we talk about FII selling, we have to understand there are different uh, nuances in this FII selling, FII activity. FII's buy through the primary market. They buy through bulk deals, negotiated bulk deals. They buy through qualified institutional placement. Uh, that is mainly very, that, that, that will be uh, valuations uh, which are, that will be mainly uh, economic activity, their market activity based on valuations. But in the stock market, it is completely different. In the stock market, the cash market uh, selling by FIIs, this 1.82 lakh crore selling by FIIs, which I told you in this 28-month uh, period from June 2022 to September 2024. This month, September, they have again turned buyers. But if you take this 28-month period, they have sold 1.82 lakh crores through the exchanges, 
through the cash market. During the same period, domestic institutional investors, domestic money, they bought stocks worth 5.91 lakh crores. So the entire FII selling has been completely absorbed, much more than that, by the domestic money. And what happened in the market from June 2022 to September 2024? Sensex has shot up from 52,000 to around 84,000, above 84,000 now. So this rally, FIIs have actually missed out and DIIs made big money. So they said there has been a tug of war and in this tug of war between DIIs and FIIs, DIIs have won handsomely. So it is this huge DII money that is driving the market. So so long as this gush of domestic liquidity continues, market can remain resilient, market can even go up. But then we must always remember, as investors, we must always remember that there is something called reversion to mean. Reversion to mean is a financial theory, it's a statistical concept. It's a financial theory also called reversion to mean. Reversion to mean, mean means average, arithmetic mean. That is whenever the value of assets or valuation of the market goes much beyond, much higher than the long-term average, they will revert, come back to the average levels. The converse also is true whenever the asset prices or valuations go much below the long-term average, they will again recover and come back to the average. This reversion to mean is a, a time-tested thing in the market. It has always happened without exception. The question is how much time will it take? So in India now, valuations are elevated, particularly in the broader market, in the mid and small cap segment. So a reversion to mean will happen. I don't know when it will happen, but investors have to be concerned about that, careful about that. The first decision to cut rates by 50 basis points has lifted global equity markets. Uh, how important is this decision? Well, uh, the Fed decision uh, to cut rates was expected. We had done some videos about this that the rate cuts will happen. The only uncertainty was regarding um, the extent of the rate cut. Will it be a quarter percentage or a half percentage rate cut? It turned out to be half percentage rate cut. But then what really led to uh, positive response in the market? Sensex uh, responded with a 1,359 basis point rally. They took one day to digest that, but after one day, there was a 1359 point rally in the Sensex. Uh, the secret of this rally was, actually not the secret, the, the trigger for this rally was uh, the statement by the Fed Chief Jerome Powell. He said inflation is coming down and we are very optimistic about inflation reaching the long term target of 2%. Also, importantly, he said, the American economy continues to be strong. It is not weakening sharply. So the possibility of a sharp slowdown in the economy is not there. These two things, that is inflation coming down, interest rates coming down, and the economy continuing to be reasonably strong, not very robust, but reasonably strong. These are uh, positives for markets. So yes, the Fed rate cut decision is positive for stocks positive for emerging markets like India because more money will flow in from the developed market to emerging markets. And thirdly, it is very positive for India. Uh, so there are lots of uh, sectoral chains happening now. Uh, PSUs, particularly defense stocks, have corrected sharply. How should investors respond to this? Well, uh, in a bull market, there will be sectoral churns, not only in bull market, in all markets, at any point of time, there will be churning between sectors. The best performing um, sector of 2020 was not the best performing sector in 21, and that was not the best performing sector in 2022. That story continues. But uh, what we have to understand is, in a very ferocious bull market like the present bull market, the sectoral churns are happening much faster. 
The very important point that we are to understand is that um, markets always overreact. Markets overreact on the upside and overreact on the downside. So uh, last year, for instance, there was um, a lot of uh, activity associated with uh, railways and defense stocks. The PSU stocks in general and most of the P uh, railway stocks and defense stocks, most of them are uh, PSU stocks. Now the government has, uh, has been spending a lot of money on infrastructure, on railways and also in defense. So there is no doubt that uh, these two sectors, railways, defense, these companies in these sectors will do exceedingly well. Prospects are bright, no doubt about that. But the market overreacted. The market overreacted and ran ahead of the fundamentals. To give you a data, if you take the last uh, four year or five year period, the profitability of this group, if you take railways and defense as a group, the profitability of this group multiplied three times, but the market cap multiplied 10 times. In the, cal ca ca in the case of uh, uh, defense stocks, market cap multiplied 15 times. That was unjustified. That was a case of fundamentals lagging the market valuations, right? Momentum, these are called the momentum stocks. People are buying because there is momentum in that. People expect that these stocks will again continue to go up. So we had done a video in, I think it was in June, and we warned the investors about this uh, high valuations in uh, these segments which are getting overheated. No uh, justification for 70 PE, 75 PE, 80 PE, in some cases even 90 PE. So that what we are witnessing now is a reversion to mean in this. So if you take the last three months, during the last three months, Nifty is up by more than 5 percentage. Defense index is down by more than 7 percentage. It is uh, a sort of rebalancing and reversion to means. But now uh, one can say that the valuations of these stocks are not excessive, they are becoming more reasonable. So what should be the ideal investment strategy now? Well, in this context of um, elevated valuations in the market, particularly in mid and small, small, small cap segments, uh, an ideal investment strategy should be a strategy that focuses on large caps. Investors should give priority to safety. I have been saying that for some time now. I am saying this not with the perspective of one month or two months. This is the medium to long term perspective. Priority should be to large caps. Priority should be to quality, not momentum. So focus on quality stocks in the large cap space. Don't chase momentum stocks. You can invest, you can continue to invest in the broader market in the mid and small cap space because there are stocks in the segment which have great potential. There is no doubt about that. So investors can continue to invest in the mid and small cap segments, ideally through systematic investment plans in the mutual fund. In this present context where there is no valuation comfort in the market, where the market is driven predominantly by uh, domestic liquidity, investors should give more importance to asset allocation. So each individual investor should uh, think what are my financial goals and for achieving those financial goals, they should be investing money in different asset classes. Um, next uh, video we can do on asset allocation. So I will explain more about that in the next video. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.